Welcome to Zolder, Belgium. A sunny day, but the weather is changing, so it's a little bit difficult for all the drivers. It's the fifth weekend of ETRC truck racing, and now let's hear what the drivers say. What are their expectations for the weekend? No, normally every circuit, it's good for us to, to make wins. In the past, I win races everywhere, but in the past, everything works well. So now we have a yeah, a little bit of a gap to, to close to Nobby and Sasha and from this side that's the experience this weekend to come back in the front and then we make races. I think it's always very difficult. Uh, you have no space, you have a wall on the left side, a wall on the right side. If you make a little mistake you have sometimes a big problem. You have to be very careful with the brakes. It's very hard on brakes, and you have to be very, very careful and don't overheat the brakes. So then you lose uh, the race. If you overheat the brakes, you lose the race. Luis is uh, doing also uh, rallies with uh, Mini, you know, off road rallies. Uh, he won the last rally in Spain, so let's hope that uh, he can do it well here also. But for him, it's the first time this year, so. He has to get used again to the track, so it will be a little bit difficult for him. So you see, all the drivers are on fire. We are also on fire and looking forward for an exciting race weekend. Four races, let's do it. Welcome back in Zolder, it's qualifying time and for sure the favorite is Norbert Kiss. Let's hear what the chief mechanic of Norbert Kiss said after they get the pole. Finally it was a really exciting qualification. As the first uh, fast lap, Jelhen Ham was faster than us. Well, luckily the second fast lap we were just a bit faster, so it's a lucky day, I guess. It was really good. Clemens Hecker had a technical problem and had to stop his truck. We asked in his team what happened. We are changing the engine. The engine is broken. So we try to uh, make a new one in it, so we can start in the, in the first race. We hope it. That was the qualifying Norbert Kiss for the fourth time on the pole and now enjoy the race number one. So the action on Saturday here at Zolder got underway with race one. Leading straight from the off was Norbert Kiesch. A brilliant start led him into turn one towards the first corner. Jochen Hahn followed him through with Sasha Lenz following suit, using all the curve on the exit, using a bit too much of the road, and then the gravel was Alia Kolok rejoining the circuit as safely as she could. And that was Stefan Fass running very wide in pure avoidance. The rain started to fall very early on. Through the Klein chicane we went, and you can see the gaps very quickly starting to build. Norbert Kiech continued to work forward, even with the ever-changing weather and track conditions. And that lead gap only proceeded to build up. Jochen Hahn did what he could to stay in touch, and so did Sasha Lenz. Under the bridge we went, and you can really see this lead gap slowly starting to extend. Antonio Albatetti did what he could to lead with that trio as well, but nothing could really come of it. Shane Brereton doing what he could as well, hanging on to the coattails of that lead group as the field files through in towards the Villeneuve chicane, the black and white warning flag being shown there. We later discovered that that was for a potential overspeed from Jochen Hahn. 
on the exit of Lucien Bianchi box, very sideways all through the gravel, was a Stefan Fass pushing the absolute limits there. But you can see just how big that lead gap is between Norbert Kiesch and Jochen Hahn. And it's only proceeded to go that way as well. Of course, Jochen Hahn, in the back of his mind, he's got to think about that overspeeding penalty. Sasha Lenz just in the background as well, doing what he can to stick with him. Across the line for the final time, however, it was Norbert Kiesch led from lights to flag. A brilliantly controlled race. Jochen Hahn crossed the line in second place, but due to Stewart's review, that was later changed. Sasha, Le Sasha Lenz crossed the line in what was third place, but evolved in second place. And you can see there, Antonio Albertetti inherited that third place position. Everybody bringing their trucks in towards the podium. And there is Norbert Kiesch on the top step of the podium, celebrating with himself and, of course, his team. And in a few moments' time, we have the interview. The start was not the best, and, uh, and Johan, was, Johan was on the outside of me, and Sasha was really close behind me, so the first turn was really, really difficult to make it through. And, uh, and you know, not to make any mistakes. But, uh, yeah, it worked. So after race one, you can see the results up on your screen now. Stephanie Halm took the reverse grid pole position. Of course, the results from race one carried forward for race two and the top eight are reversed. So Stephanie Halm did inherit that provisional pole and Norbert Kiesch will start in eighth place. There you can see Jochen Hahn down in 12th place after picking up that time penalty for the overspeed and giving him a lot of work to do for the rest of not only Saturday, but heading into Sunday as well. So as the podium celebrations got underway, Norbert Kiesch kicked off the weekend exactly like he wanted to. Did a brilliant job in Super Bowl earlier on in the day and then heading out, leading from lights to flag. And with Antonio Albertetti taking to the podium, somewhat unaware of the shortcomings of Jochen Hahn. Brilliant drive from Sasha Lenz also to take the second step of the podium. What a spectacular first race with a dominating Norbert Kiss, but also a very good performance from Steffi Heim. She started at 11, ended up at 8, and now because of reverse grid, she is on the pole position. I think everything can happen in the race. Um, my plan is to have a good start, to win the start and stay in the front and uh, maybe get some gap uh, so I don't have to fight too much. But this is all the plan, you know. Um, I'm happy to be lucky in the first race to get the eighth position. And uh, yes, now I will fight for the podium. Race two of the weekend was under very different conditions to what we saw at race one. You can see rain pouring down. The heavens had opened and the first two laps of the 12 lap race was under yellow flag conditions. Only two laps later, however, we were back under green flag conditions and at full racing speed with Steffi Halm leading the way ahead of Teo Calvert. So negotiating the very slippy and slidey Zolder circuit was Steffi up at the front. A great show of true truck driving. You can see Rene Reinhardt sat there in third place trying to pick off Teo Calvert but just a couple of laps later he had to swap his attentions to Adam Latchko working his way through and past with a bit of door-to-door -door contact at the Villeneuve chicane. Adam Latchko up into third place. Just a few laps later we saw Norbert Kiesch looking rather second-hand working his way through the Klein chicane. The next target for him was Jamie Anderson. As the wet weather continued throughout the race, you can see Norbert Kiesch working his way up the inside of Jamie Anderson at turn one and then focused his attentions on Sasha Lenz. He moved his way over to the outside, ready for Stad and Voxbox. But the rainy conditions are starting to catch a couple of drivers out. Alia Kolok found herself going over the grass just a few laps later. Steffi Helm at this point already in second place, but had quite the sizable gap back to Rene Reinhardt. Here we can see Teo Calvert trying to fend off the attentions of Antonio Albertetti, who throws the truck to the inside for turn two and gets that position made. 
in towards turn one just a couple of laps later. Antonio Albertetti up the inside of Rene Reynard. There's a tiny bit of contact there, but that's just enough to throw Rene wide. All through the gravel he goes, very sideways, gets the moment collected up. But in that battle, all of the attentions ahead to Luke Garrett going all over the grass, manages to get avoided by Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kiesch. But in the end, it was Adam Latchko to take top honours in race two of the weekend. Steffi Halm crossed the line to finish a brilliant second place. In towards the pit lane, everybody came and the podium celebrations started. Adam Latchko. When it's starting raining before the race, I'm very happy. I'm a little bit change of setup and I enjoy all the race. <laughs> Why you are so strong when it's wet? I'm strong on the wet from the go-karts when I have a six-year-old. Uh, I like every time wet condition until here, until now, it's the same. So Adam Latchko evidently the one to beat in the rain up at the top and the Czech driver in the number 55 Baguera Freightliner, four and a half seconds clear at the top. Stephanie Harm with a brilliant second place. Norbert Kiesch finds himself quite the way down the order in eighth place after a hard fought battle with Jamie Anderson. Sasha Lenz found himself in sixth place as well after trying to work his way past Antonio Albertetti. Jochen Hahn somewhat out of place in 11th and Luke Garrett after a retirement due to a loss of power. Podium celebrations continued. Adam Latchko on the top step of the podium. Steffi Halm in second. And then it was Theo Calvert in third. Race two of the weekend has just finished, and as we are ahead of Sunday's action, we spoke to Aaliyah Kolok and her plans for the future. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Alaya. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve in your racing career? I want to be the best at uh, most at well, everything I drive. So I want to compete in Dakar, and I want to do GT races and I want to win so that's the main goal for for that you just mentioned it uh, Dakar this is your your dream uh, yes I'm very looking forward for Dakar we've been training a lot this year to prepare and we're gonna be doing some uh, races after the truck season so I'm very looking forward to do Dakar next year I would do it this year but we're too young, we're only 17, so once we turn 18, we're going to compete, and I'm very excited. Yeah. Is driving a Freightliner in, in a kind of preparing for Dakar? Well, I, I, every driving helps in some way. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how, but um, every chance I get to drive is, is good for me. Thank you very much. Good morning here from Zolder. What an exciting first race day with a dominating Norbert Kiss and a rain hero. Um, we saw Adam Latzko. He came from the fifth place and won at the end. But at this second race, there was an incident uh, between uh, Norbert Kiss and uh, Jamie Anderson, there were a lot of discussions and now we see why they had the discussions. Let's see the pictures. I think Sasha, maybe not with the best run coming out of the final corner. He's looking to the inside is Norbert Keys trying to follow the same gap as Sasha. Allowing Jamie Anderson to run himself out wide and potentially two for the price of one here. Norbert Keys up the inside. And now let's hear what both drivers said to this incident. I just told him that I think it's it's uh, it's not so fair, and I think they took the team play a little bit too far. That's all. At the end, uh, can you sort it out? Uh, are you friend uh, again with him, with Jamie? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say at the moment that we are friends. Maybe later. <laughs> Uh, my thoughts are that uh, sometimes when a baby kicks the toys out of the pram, there's a big problem. Um, and Norby has it too much his own way. 
He thinks that he can use his bullying tactics on the track, and with me it doesn't work. Um, as, as the saying goes, what he gives, he gets back. And that's simple as. Just because you have Norby in your mirrors, don't mean you need to pull over and say, oh, thank you, there you go. It doesn't work like this. If he's so much of a good driver, he should have got past. And now we are ahead of race three. Let's see if the racers can keep their head cool this time. So a slightly sunnier Sunday kicked off with race three of the weekend. It was Jochen Hahn starting alongside Adam Latchko. The race got underway. Jochen Hahn on the extreme right of your screen. It will be the inside for turn one. You can see Sasha Lenz trying to follow through the same gap, and it's all bunched up in the mid-pack. There is Jamie Anderson looking to make a few early inroads. Very wide there for Teo Calve on the run up towards Lucien bianchi -Bogt. Lost the position, but continued on without too much of an issue. Riding on board with Norbert Quiche all over the tail end of Sasha Lenz, who was also trying to get past Stefan Fass just up the road. Norbert Quiche, while he put it on pole position due to a penalty, he started at the very back end of the order. Having got past Rene Reiner and then Stefan Fass, he continued to carve his way through the order. So at this point, it was looking good for a reverse grid pole, but he continued to work forward later on the brakes, all the way up the inside into Jackie Xbox. Quick honk of the horn to let him know he's there. And Norbert Kiesch up yet another position. The next target for him was the Baguera Freightliner of Teo Calve. In towards the Villeneuve chicane, he tried to pick off Teo, outbraked himself and went all through the gravel. And just a few corners later, he handed back the position and then recomposed himself, ready for it again. And here we can see on the run in towards Lucien Bianchi box all the way around the outside, found a lot of bravery on the way in. And the next time we saw them, they had changed position. Here is Steffi Hull trying to attack Andre Gersim and doing exactly the same that Norbert did just a few laps prior. Of course, slightly later on in the race, Norbert Kiesch did eventually get past Steffi Harm, and then with a brilliant cutback through the final corner in the closing stages of the race, Norbert managed to work his way past Andre Kersim and find the space to run over and defend before turn one. Nothing really much changed before the end of the race. Jochen Hahn took the win here for race three ahead of Adam Lachko and Antonio Albathetti crossed the line in third place. Everybody came in towards the pit lane for their podium celebrations. Jochen Hahn delighted for the first win of his 2021 campaign. The six-time champion starting to retake the reins. Quick podium celebration and everybody was more than happy to spray some champagne. We work hard on it to come back to the podium. Now we are on the podium and on the first place. Okay, we are a little bit lucky. Nobody had a, nobody is faster today. And he have unluck in the time break with small problems. And from this side, I enjoy it. But normally I'm on the second place. But we come back on the first place. That's very nice. So Jochen Hahn on the top step of the podium, spraying the champagne over his fellow drivers and his team. And a brilliant race all round. Jochen Hahn took the win there for Iveco with Adam Lachko sat there in second place. Antonio Albatetti finished in third. Shane Brereton, after finishing in eighth, will take reverse grid pole for race four of the weekend. Jamie Anderson somewhat out of position at the tail end of the order, but all that can change with one final race from this weekend. So that was the end of race number three with the first win of Jochen Hahn and now we are looking forward to race number four. Because of reverse grid, Shane Brereton is starting from the pole position. Let's hear what his thoughts are. Yeah, I think me and Theo have had a battle all weekend and I don't see this race being any different. Now we are ahead of race four. Can Shane Brereton defend his pole? 
or will Norbert Kiss overtake him? So let's see and let's keep rolling. So the fourth and the final race of this weekend at Zolder got underway with Shane Brereton on pole position, backing the field up, but a standout start for Norbert Keish, grabbed the right gear, got full boost, and worked his way from fifth to third in the space of a couple of hundred metres. Then on the way in towards turn one, it was Teo Calve looking for the cutback on Brereton, but finding the front of Norbert Keish's truck. There's a little bit of contact in the background, and that's between Luke Garrett and Rene Rayner. Luke Garrett recovers the better of the two. Rene sat there trudging through the gravel, doing what he can to rejoin as quickly as possible. On the run-up towards the Klein chicane, Quiche massively outbreaks Calve, and then looks for the best cutback he can and manages to do it successfully. Side by side on the run-up towards the Villeneuve chicane go Quiche and Brereton, and Quiche from fifth to first in the space of just a couple of sectors through the Villeneuve chicane the position is secured and Calve looks for the same gap yet more contact between the pair of them a little bit of damage now being carried by Brereton but they do manage to continue on Adam Latchko squeezed his way through the same gap as well and the quicker of the two works past one and then manages to work his way into second place through the Villeneuve chicane the teammates swap around and Latchko sets his sights on Quiche there is the damaged and punctured Rene Reynert pulling into the paddock for retirement. Norbert Kiesch yet further extending his lead gap over Lachko, who has his teammate Teo Calve in tow. And there was Brereton. A wonderful camera angle from the stands with our wonderful supporters here at Zolder this weekend. Really have come in numbers. Shane Brereton doing what he can to fend off Sasha Lenz. Sasha, for Sasha, this is a crucial overtake for the championship. But sadly, that time through, he couldn't quite make it work. Jochen Hahn was in hot pursuit as well, looking to make amends for an earlier incident, but couldn't quite squeeze his way up through the inside. By the end of the race, it was Norbert Kiesch to cross the line to take the chequered flag first, followed by Adam Latchko in the first of the Bagheera Freightliners, and Teo Calve crossed the line in third place. Shane Brereton pushed him across the line, still with Sasha Lenz behind, and Jochen Hahn followed suit. Chequered flag still being waved and Norbert Kiesch really really enjoying the power he has underneath his right foot celebrating what has been a rather up and down weekend for himself but a good haul of points for the championship nonetheless two Bagheera Freightliners making up second and third place and Teo Calve has had a standout weekend as well there is a very happy Norbert Kiesch ready to congratulate with his team and celebrate another win up on the podium, holding the trophies aloft, and down for a interview. And then, yeah, on the on the first chicane, the breaking, I could overtake Theo, and I see Shane made a mistake in the chicane, and he was clear, alone in front, but he still he still made a mistake. So I I, I saw that immediately that if I have a good exit from the chicane, then I can I can try and overtake him yeah. as well. And I did have a good exit on the chicane. I went on the right side of him, and uh, down to the Vilna chicane, the right side is good. So I could I could outbreak him and uh, and take the first place. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, like you said, four four win in uh, in this weekend in Goodyear Cup, uh, two podium, two third place. Uh, I think we cannot uh, believe better. Of, uh, honestly, I'm really really happy with the weekend. We made uh, amazing perfor uh, amazing performance. So a brilliant weekend from Teo Calve, very happy with his performances. Took to the podium six times throughout, four times for the Goodyear Cup and twice for finishing third overall. Norbert Kiesch took the final podium spot of the weekend. Up to the top step, he went ahead of Adam Lachko and Teo Calve. Shane Brereton from the front row of the grid finished in fourth with Sasha Lenz in fifth. Jochen Hahn still with performance to find, but he is going the right way in sixth. Steffi Halm in seventh and Andre Kersim finished in eighth and then the Spaniard of Antonio Albacete in his MAN finished in ninth place ahead of the Tank Ball 24 racing Scania of Stefan Fars in 10th. Jamie Anderson finished in 11th place a weekend of what ifs for him ahead of Heinrich Clementeca, Alea Kolak and Luis Riquenco in 14th place. So the final podium of the weekend took place and what a brilliant weekend it has been. 
here at Zolder for the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Overall standings after this weekend's action. Norbert Kies still remains up at the top of the order, extending that lead margin. However, this time he doesn't have Sasha Lenz in tow. It's Adam Lachko in his Freightliner on 113 points. Only four seconds back from himself is Sasha Lenz in third. Then we drop back away from the hundreds to Antonio Albertetti in fourth with Jochen Hahn fifth. Then it's Theo Calvé after a dream weekend, a point ahead of Steffi Harm. Then it's Andre Kersum, Shane Brereton and Anthony Janiek. A no-show for this weekend in his number 66 M. Man. What an amazing weekend here in Solda, Belgium, with a dominator, Norbert Kisch, and the young talent, uh, Theo Calvé. And I found a little leftover here. Maybe I take this piece at home to have good memories here from Belgium. Bye-bye. <laughs>